Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and today we have Edouard Sherwood from Cobert in France. Um, he focuses on high-tech bamboo fiber composite for airplanes, train, boats, etc. Um, we will um, um, focus mainly on three main topics. The first one is the Cobra startup journey. The second one is the challenges for industrialized bamboo, which are really high. <laughs> and the third one are the top or the main products of Cobra Togen. Welcome, Edward. Great to have you here. We had quite a hard time to, to get this podcast. <laughs> yeah, but we made it. We made yeah, it. Yeah. Hi, JJ. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't know if you want to uh, give a short intro from uh, your perspective, just... Uh, yeah, maybe just before I introduce the company, as I'm the founder and it's been over 10 years I've been going through this journey, uh, maybe just give a quick intro on myself. Yeah. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer specialized in robotics. Mm -hmm. I worked in industrial sectors such as the semiconductors, the, uh, the medical sector, and then aeronautics, building robots for different applications. And um, then I realized I wanted to tackle the challenge in linked to the environmental to env environmental issues. And I could see in the aeronautics sector that there was a need for sustainable materials. And so I discovered bamboo, started working with it, and then uh, I took a redundancy plan to go full time, have a, have a bit of cash to launch the project. And I developed a technology to well, the, what we tried to do is to bring to manage to bring bamboo uh, towards the composite materials mm -hmm. which is a very composite materials is a very overall word so um, often i'm mistaken especially in the bamboo world so now i tend to insist on the composites we're talking about are really fibers that are molded into resin so mm -hmm. they really they give the mechanical properties they, they really go into molds and um, to do all the types of reinforcements, you really need to manage to get a continuous fiber, a continuous reinforcement. And that was my the big plan of Cobra yeah. And we developed a technology to get a continuous ribbon. Oh, so that's and bamboo this... ribbon fiber. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, our technology extracts very, very thin strips and welds them together. You might see the welding points yeah. a bit oh. everywhere. And how do you weld also... bamboo fiber? <laughs> you have money, invest in the company and you'll know. <laughs> now, there's, a, there's a pattern to that uh, and it's uh, thermal compression. Mm. Um, wow. So it's just heat and pressure that manages to, to link the bamboo together. We have some references where we add a bit of binder for specific reasons and specific applications. So we've, we've got varied products. And just to, for you to understand, mm -hmm. our, comp our competitors are carbon fiber or glass fiber. Yeah, that's the classic this, today, right? And this is carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, so now you understand what we're trying to do. This is the raw carbon fiber, yeah. and we're trying to, to provide an alternative with bamboo. Wow, that's really mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, and you're the first ones, basically, who, who has been like, doing this yeah well on the market when i started we were really the first ones that were starting to see other companies but the the usual oh i don't have samples here sorry but the the usual product is really to have a, the the smallest fiber as you can to be <laughs> impregnated with the resin mm -hmm. and um and everyone works on that i mean carbon fibers are five microns i think Size, Inside yeah. there, there's a size. There's a thousand of them just in one one roving, one yarn. I understand? And, yeah. really, and really, what what I think is quite good is I try to, we try to focus on bamboo, and bamboo is often worked as uh, strips. Mm -hmm. And we thought we need, as we want to bring bamboo onto the market, we need to bring it the way it is. Mm -hmm. So to try and make a continuous strip, but this is really a breakthrough on our market because experts, when they see our re reinforcement, they they don't really understand because from a very tiny thing that's a few microns diameter, we get to a big square a rectangular section that's a few millimeter, a tenth of a millimeter. Yeah. So it's it's a bit confusing. And so we we really had a lot of work to make our clients and the experts understand that it's unique, but it's got a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've managed that because now we, we do have some partners to weave different types of fabric. This wow. is called... A UD fabric. This could be like veneers for the teeth also. 
No, not really. Not really. Is, is, is something that you stick onto a surface. Mm -hmm. Our product go inside the surface. Mm. For, for example, this is a um, this is a final product. So yeah. with a pre preg, pre pregs wow. are fabrics that are already into a, a matrix, a resin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you stamp you stamp it in a mold and yeah. get the parts out. Wow, that's how it was made. And this is lighter this... than 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 the alternative classic. Uh fiber today or what are the advantages like to have like a basic idea of the difference from bamboo fiber to the uh, carbon fiber well the, the 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 main the main interest is sustainability i mean everyone knows bamboo stores co2 and a lot of it because mm -hmm. it grows fast so and with our process we transform it into a product that's compatible with composite manufacturing processes mm -hmm. so we store the co2 into the parts and we, we, we made an LCA, a life cycle assessment mm -hmm. uh, an in, from an independent um, organization that uh, brought out the figures that our reinforcements actually store as much CO2 as, as what is put in the atmosphere when producing glass fiber. Wow. So you, re interesting. you reverse. Oh, yeah. It's, and that's what really interests our market and also the visuals. I mean, the, this bamboo visual is interesting wow. in terms of marketing. Yeah. Absolutely. And you it... mentioned before you have like already IP, uh, so intellectual property um, on your technology, like secured, yeah. which is kind of yeah, important, we... right? <laughs> well, yeah, if you want to, uh, when you want to build an industry, you need a lot of funds and investors don't yeah. listen to you if you're not protected, which is fair enough. So yeah, we've got a patent that covers Europe, the US, Brazil, India, and China. Wow, that's a huge market share potential like well, well well the objective is really to have several uh, uh, production plants in areas close to the markets so as we're aiming for europe the us and china as being the primary markets mm -hmm. and it, it, it was and it, you mentioned it, it took you like 10 years until now to, to get where you're today so it's like a, a huge journey and uh, lots of uh, mm. In investment, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of hits also. <laughs> no, wow. It wasn't easy. No, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we we've had to build up uh, the, the the full process, and then as I said, the product is so different. We have to we had to convince the market. Uh, we also had to um, change our product to be compatible with weaving processes, pre impregnation processes. I mean, we're, we're considered as raw material suppliers. Okay. Uh, and, which and is kind of strange. It's, yeah, I imagine. And I mean, beside that, the lack of like, uh, I, I don't think there are any like standards uh, on, on, on this bamboo fiber on, on the EU. Um, level right so uh, probably you have to start everything from scratch right regarding building standards or, or even aer aerospace probably has like even higher standards I could imagine as the and the, and the real complexity is uh, our, our, I don't say fiber because I say reinforcement but let's say fiber okay. if it's easier Yeah. Um, our fiber then mixes with a resin and you've got two big families the thermosets and the thermoplastics mm -hmm. and within these families there's loads of different types um, wow. what's important <laughs> is how it binds to, to the resin mm -hmm. so there's a big complexity and as you're pointing out then there's regulations yes. if we work with a aeronautic company or a trade company or uh, in sports and leisure regulations are different and even though you can pass a regulation in one world uh, you may not pass it in another one or at least it's not the same type of test mm -hmm. so you have to do the test with it so again it's a lot of time and it's a lot of money, money. To, to actually achieve and tick all the boxes before you can really sell on the market so it's a bit similar to the clinical trials which uh, take like 10 years to, to get like uh, something on the market Almost because you have yeah. to for every market adapt your test and. Uh, I wouldn't know about the the medical sector to be honest, but yeah, the complexity is a bit there. The, there's a variety of markets to to go towards, and also what is our big problem is you have as we produce raw material, you need to produce in vast quantities mm -hmm. because I mean that is another question. Able... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we need to produce a lot. How uh, much do material do you need to get, like, let's say, uh, what is it, 100 kilo of, of fiber composite? How much? Oh, no, no, the, the waste is not the problem. The, the problem is as we work with industrial partners, because mm -hmm. again, we produce from a raw pole, we produce this continuous ribbon. 
This oh. is our product. With this, you can produce, well, I don't have samples here, but you can use it directly to make composites like rods uh, or poles. Mm -hmm. But often, often you have to transform it again into mm. what we showed earlier on, into fabrics. These yeah. are non-woven, yeah. these are woven. And from there, yeah, then you mold it into, into a composite. I understand. Uh, but in, industrial weavers, they need uh, a few hundred uh, spools that, that have a thousand meet linear meter of ribbon and to make that you need machines that push i mean if you, it takes you six months to produce that and you only do one reference yeah. i mean you, you've got only one path open it's not it's not it's not enough and edward uh, where do you get your bamboo from or what bamboo type is it is it guadua is it mosso um uh, or is it uh, that, top that's, secret that's, a, that's <laughs> another problem actually is there's so many species where where to start yeah uh, so so we've started uh, a bit naturally with uh, how we linked up with uh bamboo farmers and s suppliers we've tested a, a few species recently we've started um, well, first of all, 10 years ago, I thought that things would go quickly, that, you know, millions were going to fall off the sky because the idea was brilliant. And but it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> and so um, it's true. I, I audited uh, several farmers in uh, Latin America, Africa and Southeast Asia. Wow. And we started testing the fibers. And uh, but then very quickly, I realized that the money wasn't coming. So this became secondary mm -hmm. Then the money started coming and we started achieving technological advances, achievements. And, um, and so we, we started focusing as we had support from the French government and the region and Europe, mm -hmm. we started looking at um, what was what could grow easily in France because the the, the the bamboo supply chain in France and Europe is actually increasing very rapidly with yeah. people you know yeah. and I've seen past casts of them uh, but it's just been the last few years and it's not uh, it's not secured yet and yeah. so it was a bit complicated so but we did start um, testing the the species that grew here and we we came to a conclusion that actually the species doesn't really influence the composite processes. Mm. It might influence the final properties, mm -hmm. but as there's, there's a lot of, um, uh, of transformations, we can adapt that. And also I think, uh, it will, a species could help to optimize some certain properties like structural properties or damping properties yeah. or uh, uh, radio frequency transparency properties depending on the application mm -hmm. but it, it's always going to stay in the same world it is a natural fiber and it is bamboo so the, the, it's not going to be multiplied by three or ten uh, a specific property okay but uh, basically the, you're able to use french uh, bamboo which probably is going to be mosul bamboo from um no, no in france it's more the, the there, there is a bit of muscle from what I, I see there's a lot of philostachis Philostach. okay so yeah. that's the one which is like mostly We're, available yeah locally everywhere here. Yeah, 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 yeah but that's cool because then you have really local material you don't have to ship it from colombia or from china you know i mean that's a huge advantage yeah, well, if we need, if we want to sell in America, then we'll have to ship it to America. So might as well produce it in Colombia. <laughs> yeah, okay, but yeah, but I mean, for the start, you know, because I've talked to many architects, and some are like, "Oh, is it is it like green if we build a bamboo structure in France with bamboo from Colombia? Because we have to ship the bamboo from Colombia to France to build there. So it's mm. it's a, it's a thing to discuss, you know." <laughs> yeah, no, but to, to say it's green or not green, that was a question we, we asked ourselves a long time ago and we realized during an LCN, life cycle mm -hmm. assessment, that uh, transporting um, on a big, uh, con a big uh, ship containers, container ships, mm -hmm. um, across the world actually doesn't impact that much a life cycle assessment. If you cross France in a, in a truck, then it affects as it affects as much. So it's not very sexy yeah. to say, yeah. "Oh, yeah, I've shipped it from the other side of the yeah. world." But actually, but the impact is, is quite is quite minor because it's a huge ship and it uses X yeah. amount of fuel, but the, the amount is like breaks it down probably. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So, but but that's a reality. Again, it's not sexy to hear, but the yeah. figures are, are clear. So then, yeah. what are you looking for? Yeah. Then then there's something that's quite new these last few years is the 
circular economy mm -hmm. where they're the concept is not applied if you work with someone on the other side of the world. But yeah. wanting to be an international industrial company, I mean, we are looking at, at Earth as a rock. Um, it's as a complete rock. circular. <laughs> we are a circular planet. And... <laughs> and actually, we're even thinking of bringing bamboo in space. So we're going to get out, uh, away from the rock. <laughs> there we go to the interplanetary bamboo. Uh... <laughs> That's amazing, man. That's really amazing. This could be the yeah, title no. of this podcast, Interplanetary, <laughs> Interplanetary Bamboo Fiber. Yeah, well, well, we've started working with um, space companies and we've actually validated the, the structural properties of uh, one of our references. Mm -hmm. And now we're going through a, a whole process that, that gets closer to the medical sector, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of very specific issues in space, like degassing. Um, but there's a few applications that the major companies have identified that they want to replace carbon fiber with our bamboo. Wow. Knowing that actually we've noticed also that our reinforcements have some very dumb interesting damping properties mm -hmm. with damping peaks that are right on the carbon fiber resonance frequencies. Mm. So combi combining both is actually very convenient for the final application. Mm -hmm. For our product, it brings more structure and bringing our product uh, reduces the, um, the problems that you, you have when you only use carbon fiber, which is vibrations, wow. because it's very rigid. Yeah, so basically you add value to the end product including this this bamboo solution to existing um, technology yeah actually the word composite on our market means to compose so Compo it's often you often mix different layers of different reinforcements you put the fibers exactly where you want mm -hmm. uh, depending on how thing how your application works and uh, so it's quite common and it's true we've managed to show that uh, there is a very interesting thing because you asked what's what are the advantages sorry i yeah. didn't really answer uh, i talked about the sustainability and then we moved on but uh, the the second advantage is um density the weight mm -hmm. because as we use uh raw bamboo the density depending on where we get the strips from is between 0.7 to 1.3 mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, lower density than carbon fiber so mi mixing both of them is really, really interesting when you're looking for for weight, uh, when you've got a, a weight requirement. So like in uh, most industries, probably you got a weight environment uh, thing because you need like energy to move something. And if it's less heavy, well, you need less energy or you can move longer, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but then then composite materials are more expensive to manufacture compared to yeah. metals so there's always the price that come into consideration but so that's interesting probably opportunities it's more opportunities but it's more work also to get through and to get volumes <laughs> i imagine but i mean just talking bamboo i can imagine like the first times you just presented the idea probably people were like why would we use grass if we have like uh, our technology today probably or i don't know probably you had like mm -hmm. funny uh uh, situations yeah. there at the beginning yeah yeah or and at still. the beginning uh, <laughs> i was i had i didn't have much to show so just showing and at the beginning really i didn't have much to work with industrial companies they need material to play with so <laughs> i needed to find funds and going to to looking for funds with just a bit of bamboo fiber saying yo you're gonna we're gonna change the world with that is uh, it's not very interesting for an investor yeah. now that we really have final parts and with a, a boat has been made completely with our reinforcements. I mean, we've got a proof of concept that are being applied, being sold. Mm -hmm. So now an investor can really understands what, uh, what we're on about. And they get excited now because they can touch it. <laughs> That's the, the industrials, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but now we're getting to the next step where the, our product is not yet perfect. We can still improve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and in order to do great volumes well, or have big orders, well, you have to have a finalized product. So it's always, there's always a new challenge as I, as I move course. on. I see there's, which but it's is super obvious. excited, I think, to, to be a, like a startup and have like this, um, this speed, you know. Imagine you would be like an IBM or a monster like that already you would not be able to do what you have done in the last 10 years because that's they're true. very rigid the organization i, I mean yeah, that's true. the startup you can really like move 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 <laughs> and change yeah, no, no, the <laughs> yeah but but you, you 
when you're a big group, you've got cash. So you can do what you plan to do. When you're a startup, you have to go quickly and you do things yeah. the way you can in order to, to march the next step. And <laughs> how so. big is, is uh, the startup currently? Can you talk about numbers a little bit? Share some... Uh, yeah. How well, big is the group right now? We're, oh, the group, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the massive group. We're, well, we're actually 16 associates okay. uh, but with three working full-time and uh, most of the other associates are active business angels. And, oh. uh, they, all, they all have really different profiles. So we've got, um, there's a finan finance engineer, we've got some technical engineers specialized, mm -hmm. we've got uh, composite experts, uh, we've got uh, sectorial experts also. Uh, we've even got a, a farmer. So we're so awesome. Awesome. around the table, the cu culture sometimes that the, People don't really understand each other because no. they're not no from different. the same world. <laughs> but after, after 10 years, now we've got used to working together. And it's quite, it's quite good for me because when I've got a very technical or sectorial question, I know who to turn to to get a support. And that, that, that's the way it should be, actually. Absolutely. And, and if, if, I mean, it has to be a 360 because probably um, it's not, I could imagine, it's not 100% clear what industry it will be at the end where you'd really be able to take off or maybe it will be several industries so you still mm. have to be like uh <laughs> open yeah 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 you need to be open well, well what's funny is we do have a, a marketing strategy but we're not managing to unroll it and what's pulling us is not necessarily really what we would have imagined so because the market is so big uh, which I thought was an advantage because mm -hmm. it's so big, you yeah. can, but also it makes it very difficult to, to focus on where to go and not making a mistake. Yeah. So that's interesting. So when you talk <laughs> about the big market, you're talking about the, the general composite um, um, market or the, the uh, bamboo specifically with, with bamboo uh, market on bamboo fiber? Uh, well, bamboo. F no, it's not bamboo fiber because bamboo fiber you can make clothing with it. You can make uh, toilet paper. I mean, the, yeah. uh, that's all. All, all that <laughs> is fiber. Also, that's, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. where we're going. Yeah, we we want to we want to be impregnated by resin. No, our market is aeronautics, the train industry, the marine industry. I said the space industry, but mm. that's not for now. The automotive industry, that's a massive one. The, massive. the building industry, yeah, yeah. the building is, uh, is massive also. So mm -hmm. we do have a strategy, strategy to, 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 um, to be able to answer requirements depending also on the, uh, the expected volumes and the expected prices. And for mm -hmm. that, we need to increase our production capability. Mm -hmm. um, I understand. We're at the, begin at the beginning of this process. And you're currently doing all the, the manufacturing, the, the, the transformation, let's say, in, in France? Uh, we do our production here in carbon, it's called, just next to Toulouse, ah, oh, <laughs> which is quite cool. Uh, and and, and yeah, our, our partners, the weaving partners are European partners, some of which are very close They're in Spain, so, so just across the border, it's just a couple of hours away, a few hours away. Um, we've got other partners yeah, in other countries of Europe, but we're not working outside Europe for the moment. Mm -hmm. But again, things might evolve because as we, we're really looking, we're, we are industrial, in our industrialization process and we are looking for support, mm -hmm. financial, but not only. And so industrial companies, uh, especially from our markets, have... Um, can bring, we know where we want to go, but we don't exactly know the path. And depending mm -hmm. on the partner we're going we're gonna to collaborate with, the path will make itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because it's not Which black is... and white. You have to adapt to, to the change and, and all that, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And um, Edward, you showed a, a screen before. I don't know if, if we want to show it now to, to visualize a little bit the, the um, material process. Uh, yeah, okay, 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 wait, 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 well, if you want, yeah, just... For the ones which screen. are looking at this Think Bamboo podcast, because some of them will be listening to the Think Bamboo podcast while cooking, for example, um, <laughs> others will be looking at it uh, on their uh, smartphones or, or uh, notebooks, so this is a marine, this is the, the first... No, no, 
Now, this is just to remind the definition of composite. It's really, it's composed of reinforcements and resin. This mm -hmm. is what I call, real, that, that's my market. Okay. Uh, but, 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 but I'll go quickly down to what you were asking for, which is the applications, final applications. So there I've got a few slides showing um, different sports and leisure applications. So we can see a skimboard here. This is a kite surf. These are fins, swimming fins that we've de we've designed ourselves. We've got uh, three different references now. I, um, I just see the boat screen on on the screen right now. Uh, shit. <laughs> Slide twenty three. Twenty three, not thirty. No, twenty three from thirty. It says here, and it's uh, a beautiful boat. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll try again then. Sorry, because this is no worries. Off. Total screen. Let's try again. Check. I mean, I mean, images really help. Yeah, we're back at the same. Back at the same. Looks uh, like. Well, well, actually, it's a good slide because this <laughs> is the first boat that was done with um, a fully made with our bamboo. Uh, so the hull, the deck, the rooftop, and even the ruder, and it was put at sea in, during the summer 2022. It went along the. Um, mini transat race uh, competition mm -hmm. uh, it, it actually got damaged because uh, oh. the, the, there was a lot of problems with the skipper the skipper had trouble <laughs> and uh, but the actual manufacturer said well, we're really happy because all the um, the bamboo parts didn't break and weren't damaged so so they're, they're, they're now very confident and they're still working with us so that that was good news <laughs> <laughs> that's the important part <laughs> Cool. Wow. Uh, uh, so you, you can't see the other slides then? Or Not right now. On? No, no. It's in this. Um, it's a. It's PDF. It's a PDF yeah, viewer. Yeah. yeah. But uh, else we'll just uh, show later in the blog article some images if if you like uh, where I do the summary on thinkbamboo.org, and uh, people can okay. visualize there. Um, so um, from what I understand right now, one of the big challenges, as you mentioned a few times, is really the, the to get to 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 investors and uh, assets more uh, more money <laughs> to to get this show <laughs> me the money <laughs> <laughs> that's that's quite a, a challenge right to to get to people who understand and who are also um, looking to for for such a opportunity at the end of the day yeah yeah and it takes time also because we we have raised over two point five millions in the, wow. the start of the the project so mm -hmm. it's quite significant. But it always takes a long time, and then uh, it takes a long time to come in, and and we need to go quickly because the market is there, the demand is there, and we really need to produce now in order to uh, to go where the opportunities are. Um, and actually, we we've had we, we've just um, had the signed contracted um, collaborative projects with some uh, major industrial companies such as Arkema. Maybe you know Arkema. No. They're one of the main chemical companies in the world supplying mm. most of the thermoplastics you find everywhere. Wow. Working very closely with them. And the, this actually has brought finances to, uh, to help us industrialize uh, our process but we need more we need the, the public support but we need private support now because so, you need both of course and and those are kind of pilot projects or or uh... um this project actually is the the second project we're doing with our Kima and our other partners uh well we finished one <laughs> we did, one started in 2018 and the objective was to make some new bio-based composites so mm -hmm bamboo based so we were here to bring the bamboo and there were two chemists one for the thermoset and one for the thermoplastic world uh, who were working on new uh, bio-based matrices mm -hmm. and that's actually i love because uh, i can see that the ceo of key of our chemo um, the, the guy in charge of the project uh, at the beginning of the project he looked at our reinforcement and he said we're never going to do anything with your thing it's, it's too different to standards and at the end of the project, the results were so good, Akima decided to take the lead on the next project, the, wow. the, the current one. So that, that was a, a nice reward. Awesome. And, um, <laughs> and now the, the, the theme is really to accelerate uh, market penetration of, the, of these new products because they've worked on the uh, a resin that's called the PA11. And mm -hmm. that's 100% uh, bio-based made out of um, castor mm -hmm. oil. And actually... Wow. 
this part was is a is made with it. So castor this is hundred percent castor oil and bamboo. Wow, that's pretty yeah. futuristic if you think about it. Like, uh, like well, not for me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, not for you. Ninety nine point nine percent of most people, I'm sure, will be because it's just like okay. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you've been working on that for 10 years now. So. <laughs> so, yeah, when you're in it, you yeah. don't realize whether yeah. it's knowledge or not. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, so the industrialization process is, is on its way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and but, what about Airbus or all those huge uh, industries hmm. in, in France, Europe? Are they like open to, to uh, such uh, innovations or are they too busy with their own uh, challenges right now? Oh, no, 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 no. They're very, very open. Just for the little story. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot to say after, before I, I, I went into Bamboo, uh, I had a 10 year period where I was consultant for, for Airbus. Ah, so when, okay. I when, I, when I created the company, yeah, I've got a big aeronautic background, sorry. And um, actually Airbus helped us when we created the company and we're very, very close to them because they're in Toulouse. I mean, they're just next door to us. <laughs> um, so we're, we're very close, but they're not the only ones. I mean, the whole uh, aeronautic sector is really interested in sustainability that's very very clear mm. uh, recycling awesome. bio-based and our bamboo we're, we're linked up with several big manufacturers i can't give the names yeah yeah i've given I, one name and yeah. i should maybe not have but <laughs> don't worry but for, for the little story <laughs> yeah and what about but, the automobile industry in france which is still quite uh, big worldwide right uh, renault citroen uh, peugeot uh yeah, the, the, the automotive industry is also, from what we see, very interested, but there, there is um, a big um, culture, uh, the cost, the cost is so important mm. in the automotive sector, uh, which is, it, it is maybe a bit less in the, um, in the aeronautic sector. So for, for us, this things are happening, but the momentum is bigger it's... because you need to, to prove that your product is cheap. I understand because because thinking in the past, I think there was one prototype car, like in 1980 or 90,900 uh, something, which was uh, built in bamboo fiber. I don't know if it's Ford or who uh, it was. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it recently, actually, yeah, in the US. It's, it's, it's green. I think he painted it green or something. Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm but it's, not good it's at that, so. total bamboo fiber. It's really amazing. And then you think like, why are we still having like carbon fiber or plastic with cars if we could have like, but it's the price thing right now. It's probably not cheap enough to, to produce on mass scale or something well, like that. Because investments have been made. I mean, when, when they're made, the costs are down over there. So you need to make new investments yeah. in order to bring a new material in. So, I mean, there's a tightening issue and, and a maturity issue. I mean, we, we've proved, a lot but we don't prove everything so yeah the, there's let's say some risk to uh, to to invest in that solution of ooh, course i said the wrong word oh i've said the wrong risk word. and opportunity <laughs> it's always both uh, yeah. <laughs> don't worry don't worry thank, thank you thank you <laughs> and um so so the challenges to the to your industry right now um are not only bamboo is basically to to um to show uh, Actually, what you explained right now that they have been like huge investment in other technologies such as carbon and plastic, where uh, they have the machines, they have all the processes and all that. And basically, uh, it's running and it works. And, and they're, not everybody's yet ready to like invest in something new, which will be better. Actually, these last few years, we've seen a lot happening. And that's why I'm saying we need to be quick because... Uh, when I started Cobratex uh, over 10 years ago, I mean, in the central uh, events, or market events, mm -hmm. industrial companies used to tap me on the shoulder and say, oh, it's good what you're doing, but <laughs> we want the same same mechanical properties and cheaper than, than glass fiber, which is the standard, yeah. well, the cheap standard. And now um, industrial companies don't talk like that anymore. Uh, because the, um, I think the, the big turn was the fact that regulations are falling in all industries and pushing uh, to have answers in terms of recyclability, bio-based co contents and all that under the life cycle assessments. Mm -hmm. One figures, uh, figure 
objectives are imposed to industrial companies, so they can't they, just, they can't laugh about it anymore, <laughs> and they need to they need to improve things. But it takes time, and yeah, it's true. Uh, when you use a new material, you do have to to adapt your process to find solution, and it takes a bit of time and, and a bit of cash. So that, that's for sure. So, but things are moving. That's what I'm trying to say. These last yeah. few years, really, it was very clear to us and to all the people around us. It's very clear. Well, that's positive. I mean, uh, change is, is mm -hmm. constant, but uh, change is opportunity and, and risk, of course. <laughs> well, it's, it's the change is necessary. I mean, yeah. we, we are Absolutely. all aware of that. And Absolutely. What, what I'm happy to see is that now the industry is really facing it. Um, even though they're big groups, so they've got they've got the power to change things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, it, so. it happens. I mean, it's 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 like also the uh, I probably you know that for sure. But like the bamboo industry in China was like non-existent, I think, in the seventies, and then now it's like a five billion industry. Um, mm. Like they used bamboo, but it was not an industry. So it's it's the difference between using bamboo and having a bamboo industry where you sell stuff and you produce and you're you have all this industrialized stuff so uh it took them a while too right but uh yeah well, for, from what i hear it's true in asia the bamboo has a, a low image it's the the plant yeah. of the poor which yeah. is not what we see in europe it's yeah. uh, it's very exotic and very sustainable and that makes a lot of difference yeah that's a big big difference i believe it's a mindset thing where everything what, that you have, which grows in your backyard, is always like, ah, this is not so interesting. But if it grows somewhere else, it's like, oh, this is, you know. <laughs> well, if it, well, there's a lot of criticism in France about that because when it grows in your backyard, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> That's what I hear too. People are scared, like, oh, don't plant bamboo, it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on the other hand, I mean, um, you can regulate and improve so much stuff if you have bamboo in your backyard. So uh, actually, there's more pro than contra from uh, my perspective. But then again, it's personal. <laughs> Regarding your, your top products or main products, um, can you share um, like um, some applications there or um, so we get like a better... Uh, overview of um, yeah I'll try again. Let, let me just try again this yeah uh, maybe if you close it the if you close the pdf uh, and open it again okay you know that, sometimes that. yeah you never know you yeah never know. let me just try it off let me try again okay so the double click is the and now i need to share the screen screen off what can you see now Slide Nothing. 23. <laughs> ah, well, I okay. should not have shown you any on. <laughs> okay, well, well, I'll say it already then. Um, yeah. What is there? What is there? In the sports and leisure, there's images of a skateboard, of a kite surf, of swimming fins, a helmet, um, other kite surfs with foil or without foils, skis, snowboards, um, others. Uh, Maleta, I can't remember how you say that in English now. Some lights also we've done. We've done some uh, prosthesis and the uh, sorties uh, and the prothesis, you know, when you. you, uh, you prosthesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. And actually, I've got one over there. We, we've developed some packaging also, some foldable packagings, mm. uh, some rigid packagings There's, for the building industries. We've got, done some. Uh, swimming pool tops uh, and also some modules for um, for camping sites there's been so, uh, so, uh, uh, soft mobility so um uh, the pedalo cab it's uh, like a boat uh, with a bike no no no, no. It's, a, it's a car it's a car with it's it's wheels but where you pedal oh okay it's, uh, like a, a, uh, a foot powered car that's kind it, of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's what it is. There's been several boats made. Also, we've done some um, uh, overhead compartments for for airplanes. Mm. Done a few different types of them. Very interesting. Some um, business class seats also. Uh, and I this. heard, I, I read on your website or somewhere that you made like the front part of the airplane. I don't know how it's called. The nose. Uh, the, that's the it. radom. That's well, this is yes, yeah, it's, it's scaled down. It's one to fifteen, I think. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the demonstrator. And actually, it's because um, our reinforcements proved to have some very interesting um, 
properties in terms of um, radio uh, radio wave uh, transparency mm. and behind the nose of the airplane that's where all the the antennas are mm. so you don't want to you don't, you don't yeah. want to disturb the signals yeah and then, this is a, one of the prototypes that was done. well i thought it was a chinese hat you know <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, 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 that's, that's a bit of a shame because that's what people think, but yeah. it's not. It's for an aeroplane, it flies. <laughs> it's high tech. Uh, it doesn't fly this one, no. Well, but <laughs> possibly soon it will be in, in, on, the, on the front of the, and it has like all this pressure and all this temperature difference and it survives everything then. Or has well, to. It hasn't flown and it hasn't flown yet because uh, the, the objective is really to characterize uh, um, impact on uh, wavelengths. So for mm -hmm. the moment, it's all in there. And it's a long process. So new, new, new materials into big industries like that, you have to go through certifications and it takes you between three to five years in aeronautics. Mm. And what about so, like um, um, smartphones or computer, like the case? Is that a market too or is it like... It is, it is, it, it is. is. Uh, yeah, we have, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we've got partners who made a few demonstrators, uh, but then again, they're wide markets. We need to produce in vast quantities to be able to, to process it. So if we get the right partner or the right demand, the right contract, it, go, it could go fast. But uh, for the moment, that's not what has happened yet. I understand. And so the, 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 the the main material is really you, you use the bamboo you create that um, that fiber Continu or or continuous strip strip <laughs> yeah strip uh, exactly continuous continuous so that's continuous what's really... okay yeah but how continuous is it I mean it probably is like five hundred meters or fifty meters yeah, it's, or... it's in as we weld them together it's oh you can, can do it. oh so you have one and then before it stops you weld another one and you yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's. Uh... Uh, sorry, maybe I didn't explain yeah. properly at the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> okay, but now I understand that. That's interesting. So it's really it's it's continuous strip, um, um, like. Uh, okay. Okay. That's it's interesting. Continuous, like, like any fiber. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it took me some time to convince you. Uh, Forty-two minutes. Wow. <laughs> well. <laughs> It's uh, it's something new for me. I I just know the three D printing uh, things and and obviously like the the clothing uh, f fiber and stuff like that. And a little bit I, I've seen of the the shipping or or carbon fiber for bicycles and shipping. But obviously this is and I think that's part of the challenge, right? You have kind of a, a um, updated product which like this is not common at all, and and people have to understand it. And that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, there are probably people who are who are in, in this industry and everything, and it's like much more about details. And other people who are more general knowledge, or and, and then you have to like get them into the into the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's different levels. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. That, that's for sure. Um, so. Um, also regarding events, are you um, are you going on on some event where if people are interested into seeing you, talking with you in in, in person, maybe they can uh, see you. Where will we be uh, next? Next event is in a few weeks, but it's uh, it's uh, it's in Toulouse. It's an aeronautic event, mm -hmm. the sixth, I think. Uh, there was a bamboo event at Dortmund. I was hoping to go, but I'm not going to manage to make it. It's next week, uh, the European Bamboo Expo. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. That's it. I, th I think you're going to be over there, no? I'm going to be virtually uh, no. there. I was there last year. I've actually, okay, no, no, because I yeah. saw your logo on the event, so I thought maybe you'd be there. Yeah. Um, no, I was hoping to go, but I think it's not going to be possible. Um, what else? What else? Uh, then the, the sectorial events, the, most probably at the Mets trade. Uh, at the end of the year, which is a marine marine uh, event in in Holland, so there, there's loads of events. It really, really depends on my agenda. I just go where I can, when I can. <laughs> of course, of course. But uh, what is else an option? Like best option? Like just write an email or or contact you on LinkedIn if people are yeah, interested. Yeah. I do, do please, yeah, do. Okay. Uh, Cobra Tex. Cobra on, on YouTube too, right? You have the website. Yeah, we we are we're quite active on LinkedIn for communications. We've got accounts on Twitter and Facebook, but we don't use it that much. We're a small team, so communication we try to be efficient. Of course, but uh, but but we we easily can get in touch with that very easily going through our website. I mean, it all comes to me. 
Okay, awesome. All well, that's uh, straightforward. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> now the idea here with the Think Bamboo podcast, of course, is that people uh, possibly uh, will will uh, find the uh, page or the blog article and then uh, will see it like in in other words explained and maybe uh, people are interested so they will uh, seek for the best way to to come in contact with you and if you have youtube the website i'll put those links there and uh, yeah, yeah, awesome. that's uh, visibility you know <laughs> okie dokie well thank you very much yeah. jj <laughs> well you're very welcome i'm glad that you had the uh, time we found time to to share this i'm sure a lot of people mm -hmm. will have uh, like their minds uh, expanded now that they know uh, that also this can be done with bamboo which is really a real innovation um for sure and i don't know if is there anything you would like to to add um for the closing words from your side uh, uh come and support us to bring bamboo to space <laughs> <laughs> interplanetary let's, bamboo yeah let's uh, <laughs> let's let's fly off with bamboo <laughs> Awesome. So uh, yeah, you should be talking with Ellen uh, SpaceX regarding uh, the, uh, the rockets there and the satellites and uh, all that. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that's a good message. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to make the shout out to Ellen and uh, invite him to Toulouse. <laughs> to carbon, to carbon. To carbon. <laughs> let's see, let's see. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Edward. I thank really you. enjoyed it. And um, let's stay in touch. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thanks, JJ. See Take you soon. care. Bye -bye. See you. Bye-bye.